On this episode of Monday to Monday, we have a strange twist. My producer of the podcast, Emily, is interviewing me. You know, I we realized that you guys are probably like, who the heck is this guy? Can we get more info on this man? So Emily has taken upon herself the task of interviewing me. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so I'm Emily. I also work at 137, like Mike. Um, and I've been with the company since January, which is crazy because um, it feels like I joined last week. And um, yeah, no, I'm I have been producing the podcast since it launched. Um, and it's been awesome. I've loved working with Boyd so much. Oh, um, what? Oh, man. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I was asked over the weekend about Boyd and um they were like oh yeah what does Boyd do and I was like I know he does like artist relations they're like what's that and I was like I, uh, I don't really know so like what can you describe like what you do when you aren't recording this podcast like you clearly spend more than 40 hours a week doing music stuff like forgive m me when I sound uninformed here but can you just yeah. tell a little bit more about what you do when you're not recording this podcast? Of course. Yeah. And for everyone watching, I did just spend 10 seconds fixing my hat because this is all inverted. It's crazy. <laughs> I and know. Yes. I almost said something, but I did, <laughs> I did not. Yeah. And I did not go to Stanford. I went to Boston University, but I do enjoy wearing a Stanford hat. People look at me different. All right. So anyway, um, when I'm not working on the podcast... I run all of Gary's artist relations, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. So if you're familiar with his content, you know, throughout the years, we've been meeting with artists. I set up those meetings. Then I um, participate in most of them in person as well. So I'll be sitting next to Gary in the studio with your favorite artist or the newcomer who we want you to check out. And then, you know, I keep the relationships alive. So we bring people opportunities, you know, it's, we try to do win-win. So we are currently working with some emerging artists, some people who are about to become big, like Tia Corinne in North Carolina. And she used to work at Bojangles. She loves Bojangles. So I hit her up and I said, hey, you know, if you love Bojangles so much, like, why don't we do something with the brand? And she loved it. And we made a music video with Real Goats, who are the baby's music video team normally. But, you know, they work with anyone they, they want to. And so they worked with Tia and we made a really cool music video. That's like a fun, organic, authentic, honest way to get artists working with brands. So that's what me and Gary V are most interested in. Now, outside of like commercials for YouTube, Super Bowl commercials, we also do TikTok campaigns where we get emerging producers, artists, anyone who has a lot of talent but sees the value in building their resume by making a quick 30 second TikTok piece of audio for brands like Walmart, um, Revlon, mm, anyone you could think of. We're doing so many of those and those are fun. And then on top of that, let's see here. Didn't you say you do something about managing tours? Oh yeah. I used to tour manage. So I was a tour manager. I tour managed four tours in the USA, one in Europe. I used to manage a video director I still manage a music producer who mostly works with Future, um, A Boogie, Playboy Cardi, um, Sway Lee, just all those guys. And uh, and also, let's see here. Like, how do you have time for all this? Oh, my God. Time management is the name of the game. But, yeah, and then also, let's see, what else do we do? It sounds like full-time jobs in and of themselves. And you're just like, oh, yeah, I do this, and I do this, and I do this. <laughs> well, I've done things. And then, you know, the key is all my jobs are somewhat related. So when I'm mm -hmm. managing a producer and he goes in the studio with a brand new artist, he might be like, hey, Mike Boyd, check out this artist and I'll check them out. And then maybe I love them so much that I put them on the playlist with me and Gary. And then they, they see the love from the playlist community. Then I had them come to New York. They meet with Gary V. You see what I'm saying? So it all kind of Go mm -hmm. to, even with Gary V's V friends, um, NFT collection, mm -hmm. the producer I manage, Richie South in Atlanta, he did all the beats. So if you buy an NFT from Gary, 
you get a little video of Gary making it, like drawing it. And the music that oh, plays, yeah. the music that plays was made by my producer, you know? So uh, everything kind of oh, wow. ties in a little bit. I didn't um, even know that. Yeah. Gary V made a song, you know, me and Gary V made a song. Um, we like put it together years ago and it's Tierra Whack, Gunna, T Grizzly, produced by my producer, Richie South, mixed and mastered by Kendrick Lamar's main guy, uh, mixed by Ali out in LA. And we went hard for that song. It never came out because of uh, some politics within the music world. And Gary didn't want to. Gary V just does what feels right. So, you know, if you if you come to the office, we'll play it for you. But it's not online. It's an amazing song, though. That would have went, who knows, five times platinum. That was the best song. It's kind of funny. It just lives on my phone now. But, yeah, we do a lot. We used to do studio sessions in New York. With who? Like, what do you mean studio sessions? So Which we would like, yeah, Vayner I know Media. what a studio session is, but like mm -hmm. when you say that, what do you mean? Yeah, Vayner Media would book a studio session and we would like buy pizza and for soda, who? Just for artists we liked. So oh, that's so cool. Yeah, Tabby Wakes. Oh, yeah, girl. who's she's joining us? Yes, that's so it, cool. I'm so excited yeah, to work with her. Paperwork Tabby Wakes should be working on the team ASAP, but um, shout out to Tabby. But yeah, like Tabby Wakes, Hugo Joe, Rollo who's in jail at the moment. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. No, he's in jail. He, no, he's just in jail. But oh, uh, okay. I'll cut that. Yeah. What time is this? You can keep it if you want. But okay. yeah, so Rallo, Illmind, the producer, just tons of people, you know, who we like. So we were just doing studio sessions, recording songs with these artists. And what's cool is most of these artists love Gary and they love his content. So when we're in the studio, Gary will be like, Gary's, amazing so you know they'll be writing their verse and gary will be like let me hear it and they'll like wrap their verse for him real quick Wait, so gary like, will be there yeah gary came to all this oh my god yeah, we recorded all of it it's all on camera and uh where does that live you do? does that live anywhere uh on d-rock's phone or something oh okay, okay. But it's not public. it might some of it might be public i don't mm -hmm. know but yeah trinidad james uh young bands but Basically, yeah, they would wrap their verses for Gary, and then Gary would be like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." But why don't you talk about how important patience is? And then they would like, <laughs> they would like edit edit the uh, lyrics a little bit. It was pretty cool. So oh it was like God, DJ so Khaled. Good. Yeah, it was like a DJ Khaled moment where Gary was getting people together. He loved, you know, obviously I was getting people together. I loved, and we we're all just in the studio making the music. You know, it, it was mm -hmm. crazy. Gary Gary loves music so much that he like. His schedule's insanity, but he was carving out time to just sit in the studio. He was sitting on the couch, you know, and watching the whole process. These songs, some people make songs quick. Some people takes hours, you know, and we were just there enjoying it. And we were going to put it out. Potentially, we were going to release it somehow, but it never came out because Gary just wants to do what's right. And he just maybe one day it'll come out, but it just didn't feel right. It was it was more for fun. Do you see yourself doing a project like that with him in the future? Maybe, but mm -hmm. only if it makes sense. Like we're, we're mostly just focused on helping people, you know, win-win, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we get stuff out of some of this too. Like when we put Meg the Stallion and I believe it was her first Super Bowl commercial a couple of years ago, it probably was because I can't imagine she was in one the year before at that Super Bowl, but I don't know. But Meg the Stallion, we put her in a Super Bowl commercial so that's great for us because it's like, hey, we got Meg the Stallion in a Super Bowl commercial, but it's great for her too because who doesn't want to be in a Super Bowl commercial? And it was years ago. Mm -hmm. So you see what I mean? It's like all win-win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess I want to take a step back here for a second. Like you don't just get that job with Gary. So like I want to take a step back and talk about how you landed here. And um, you said you went to BU. So I know you're from the St. Louis area. And you went to BU. Can you talk about that and your like jobs out of college and just like walk us through how you got to Vanner? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm from uh, right outside St. Louis, but St. Louis is an interesting place. So if you're from St. Louis, I went to DeSmet High School. I grew up in St. Peter's, O'Fallon area, St. Charles. So, you know, it's pretty common, in my opinion, if you're from that area to like kind of do what I did. But then I went to Boston University. And me, my brother, my sister, my other brother, we all went to BU. Um, we all got like really good 
financial aid, scholarships. Our situation was great. So we all went to BU, which was amazing, such a good school. And what happened was I met AJ Vaynerchuk freshman year and uh, we stayed in contact, you know, love AJ. So yeah, we stayed in contact. And what happened was I was working senior year. I think I had, if I'm not mistaken, I think I had six jobs at the same time. So I was working at the front desk of Boston university, you know, like I was the person that answered phone call and stuff like that. And then I was promoting nightclubs, bars. I was also kind of managing a DJ. You know, he did a lot himself, but I was his manager. So that was cool. Um, so that's three jobs. And then, I, oh yeah, I was Warner Music Group's college rep for Boston. I was Microsoft's college rep for BU. That might've been Boston too. I don't know. And then I swear there was a sixth one. I don't remember. But anyway, I was doing all that. And when it was time to graduate, Warner Music Group, um, WEA, that's W-E-A, that's what they call the part of the company I was working with. They kind of said, you know, if you want to come to New York City, we're sure we could get you a job at Atlantic Records or one of the one of the labels we own. And uh, I loved it. And they, yeah, when I was in college, I saved up all my money that I was making from all those jobs in a shoebox cash. And I went to New York City. I took a um, one of those trains from Boston to New York City. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Buses. And get this. I went to Brooklyn and they have this housing set up for uh, college students. And so I, I don't know if I lied or not, but I told them, I was like, here's the cash. I want to live here. <laughs> and so they let me live there for like two or three months. And I guess I probably did lie and say I was a college student. And uh, yeah, I paid him in cash, went back to Boston, graduated, moved to New York City, June 1st, 2000. Around what time did you graduate? Yeah, that was just about to 2009. Ask. So yeah, okay. then I moved to New York City, lived in Brooklyn for like two months trying to get a job. And so I met with Atlantic Records. It was cool, but it wasn't like... I don't know. It was it was one of those situations that was super entry level, obviously, because I just got out of school. And it was a situation where like they weren't gonna pay me a lot. And you know, I needed money to pay rent. So I was like, okay. But I was thinking about it. And then I got a quick job being like a bus boy type thing at a restaurant that was very busy in uh financial district by Wall Street. And I was pretty horrible. Oh no. On the third day they asked me not to come back. Oh but, no, my God. I know, but I texted AJ um because I wanted to get a picture with Gary V for Twitter. I was like, yo, I need a picture with your brother for my Twitter profile picture, whatever. And uh why did you need that? Oh, because in 2009 Gary was huge on Twitter. Oh yeah, but like what were you trying to do with that? Oh, I don't know. Well, you know <laughs> what I mean. I was just like this guy, <laughs> that's smart. Maybe I could work with them. It, um, that type of vibe. When I'm was college, enough with AJ at the time for that not to be weird. Yeah, me, weird? me and AJ have always been friends. Oh, but... okay, okay. <laughs> for, okay, I didn't realize you were that close at the time. I thought you were just heading up, be like, "Yo, can I see your brother for a second? I need to take a picture with him." Like, I was like, "That's kind of weird." No, yeah. Let me step back a second. So, no, me and AJ were great friends, um, especially freshman year. You know, we started, we we met each other, and he quickly realized I knew a ton about music and he you know loved music but he knew a ton about websites and other things obviously aj's a genius but so me and him connected and we just started messing around creating a website doing all this stuff together what website or like what kind of website it was just with me writing articles about musicians i thought were going to be famous and i have a really cool. good track record of that and so that hit uh gary v's radar because aj was like yo I met this guy at college. He's pretty consistently correct. You know what I mean? And Gary was like, that's interesting. And then one person, um, I found Soldier Boy when he was in high school. Oh, my God. And he was in high school, I think, Mississippi. And it was really early. But um, I found Soldier Boy on the Internet. And I was like, dang, this kid's going to be famous. Um, and a lot of people didn't get it because they were like, oh, this music's you know, people would be like, this music's bad or whatever. But I was like, no, 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 no. Like, this guy's going to be famous. You know what I mean? Because sometimes people who, quote unquote, don't make the best music, quote unquote, do become famous. You know what I mean? Like, just because you don't mm -hmm. like it doesn't mean other people won't like it. You know what I mean? So you got to kind of mm -hmm. see past that part. 
but I did like it. But you know what I mean? Even if yeah. I didn't, I'd be smart enough to be like, okay, maybe I don't like it, but at least I know this is going somewhere. But anyway, um, yeah, so he told Gary about Soldier Boy and how I produced you know, was saying that was going to happen. And then years later he came out with cranked that soldier boy and blew up. And then it was on the radio and Gary and AJ were on their way to a jets game or of something course. like that. Not sure. Yeah. And uh, I think AJ said, yo, pull over the car. I don't know what AJ said, but Gary was like, what the hell? And then AJ was like, remember that guy, Mike Boyd, I told you about He's like, this is the artist he said was going to blow up. And it, it happened. So that was pretty cool. So, you know, Gary had that in the back of his head all this time anyway. Um, but I had never met Gary and then going super far back real quick in high school. I was the guy who made people mixtape CDs. Oh, so I like, don't doubt that for a second. Yeah. So like, you know, cause I went to school with a bunch of, um, really rich kids. So I had a computer and I was, I had a lime, wi lime wire or whatever. And anyway, these, these kids had a lot of money and they were like lazy, I guess. So they were like, yo, I'll give you $20 if you make me a CD of, this this band or this rapper or this classic rock whatever and i just downloaded it and made them cds but also i would be like yo by the way here's a cd of soldier boy or here's mike jones or here's whoever they're gonna blow up you know or here's like the local st louis artist i believe in so like i was doing all that back then too kanye west all that stuff because wow you know, when i was in high school that was all new but um anyway yeah so i moved to new york and so, you know, I always knew who Gary was. Oh, and in college, my sixth job, I figured it out. Sycamore. Oh, okay. Sycamore. He um works with Travis Scott and he's a pretty big deal. Um, I worked for him in college because I just hit him up and I was like, yo, I want to work for you. And he like put me through the test and I, you know, I don't know. He let me work for him. So that was cool. But uh, yeah, I did the same approach with Gary kind of, you know, I was like, yo, Gary's smart. I got to meet this guy, you know? So yeah. So my, so I wanted to meet Gary. And it was the third day at that job. And I remember the AJ, Park Boy job. Yeah, I remember AJ and Gary, their schedule. It wasn't gonna work out because I had to work at that restaurant. But then when they fired me, I texted AJ immediately and I was like, yo, I could come right now. And then AJ, like there it was like probably four or five o'clock. And AJ's like, All right, cool. Come to Vayner Media right now. You'll catch us right before we leave. So I went and I was wearing like my black pants, black shirt, black Converse shoes. Cause I was a bus boy, you know, all dirty, whatever. And yeah, I met Gary and he hired me on the spot. He was just this like, this is what year? 2009. Yeah. He was just like, yo, you want to work for me? Like yes or no. I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, you start tomorrow. Oh my God. And where was the office at this point? Tribeca. Wow. My God. And so what was your role when you started in 2009? Basically music relations. Okay. So similar to what you do now? Yeah. How has it evolved since 2009? Um, it's evolved a lot. So back then, we were doing a lot of the same stuff. We were doing interviews, articles, you know, like building these real relationships. Um, we still do that. Now we have more of a team to do it. But nowadays, it's more like... Um, it's a lot easier to put together brand deals, you know, like I tried to do a brand deal with uh, Kendrick Lamar um, at the early stages of his career around his section 80 project. And I don't remember all the details, but the brand didn't do it, you know, like they just didn't believe or didn't want to put their money behind him. You know what I mean? And that's mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar, you know what I'm saying? But now mm -hmm. it's not that hard for me to, get the conversation pretty far with a brand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like back mm -hmm. in the day, me and, me and Gary did um, talk to Brisk Ice Tea through Pepsi. Uh -huh. and we got a situation going with them and uh, Travis Porter from Atlanta, that rap group. And uh, that was really cool. And then we did some early connections with Mac Miller, Mountain Dew. Um, in 2013, I think. Yeah, 2013, I connected Young Jeezy with Avion Tequila, and that was a big one. Um, they were a client. They were a client of Vayner Media, so I connected the dots there. And I, you know, I spoke to Jeezy's manager for probably three or four months, and I also spoke to Ken Austin. He owns a 
he owned Avion. They sold it, I think, or something like that. And Jeezy made a lot of money because I was just, you know, the middleman. Because, you know, Jeezy's people were like, okay, we want to do it, but how do we do it? And what's it like? And blah, blah, blah. And then same conversation from the brand side is like, okay, we want to work with this guy, but what's it like? And how do we do it? And, you know, and then we all got okay. dinner. We all got dinner in New York City. And uh, you oh, and who else? Sorry. Oh, me, Jeezy, his manager, and the owner of Avion. We all got dinner in New York. And that was the first time they met. So I was there and we all got dinner. Let me grab this. What were you going to say? No, 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 no. That's, I just, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. This is the, uh, this is the bottle we drink out of. Oh my God. Isn't Look at that. that. Wait, hold on. Yep. There it is. Wow. Yeah. yeah we drank out of this that night. And then, uh, yeah, what, the owner, year was that? Owner, what? what year was that? Uh, 2013. 2013. But the owner um, of Avion, this says it was made in 2012, but that was definitely 2013 when we drank it. But yeah, the owner of Avion, he was so happy at the dinner because it went so well. And he was just like, yo, Mike, you keep this bottle, man. This was a big moment. You keep this as a memory of the dinner. So yeah, I had it right there on the desk. <laughs> So oh that's, my god, that's incredible! Wow. Yeah, and then Macklemore, back when he was um really hot and like maybe right before he won his Grammy or whatever, mm -hmm. right after he tweeted out or no, he Instagrammed um something about how he really liked Tropicana. He liked Tropicana grapefruit juice, I think, and also these little candies that they made. Anyway. I saw that message on his, or I saw that post and I told the team because I was a client too. And I told the team, I was like, yo, oh, Macklemore was a client or Tropicana? Tropicana. I was like, yo, this guy likes Tropicana because we just try to do organic stuff. And so I hit up Macklemore's manager who I knew for a while. And uh, I just told him, I was like, yo, we'd love to send you free product. And so that's all we really did. We just sent them cases of the drink and the candy, I think. And then he posted on his Instagram and shouted us out. And like, what's interesting there is that we didn't ask him to do that. But you know, when you give so when you give people free product that they already like, yeah, sometimes they post because they like the gift or whatever. But they don't have to, especially if they're that popular. But he did, and so it was like it was like, whoa, that was amazing, you know, because super organic and real. And what's funny is some people would pay a lot of money for that, but oh it's God, crazy. Yeah. We just like him i knew his manager forever and uh we just sent him what he wanted and he just posted it it was like whoa so like little things like that throughout the years but nowadays i mean we're working on campaigns with big brands for nft drops with artists we're working on youtube based commercials with artists that are like music videos we're working on so much right now and that's what really changed and that's why we're building out the team with tabby wakes and everyone else because uh we have a lot of business now. You know what I mean? Like we've always mm -hmm. tried to do it. And if you, like I said, if you pay attention to Gary's meetings on YouTube, Tierra Whack, whoever, I set those up, you know, Nikki Jam, uh, Setch, whoever, like we, I set those up. So we've been meeting and watching and learning and listening and promoting and sharing music we like since day one. But now it's like, it's the start. This is the beginning of something crazy. Yeah, that's what I want to ask you next. So like, where do you think all of, all of this is going to go, whether it's the podcast, your relations with <laughs> artists, with Gary, like, what are you excited about right now? Like, yeah, I guess that's my question. What are you excited about right now? Um, most excited right now is, uh, about helping, helping emerging artists who are not signed to record deals, get some money. Um, and exposure and build their resume. So like Lil Polo T in New York City, perfect example. Really like the guy, really like his music. I've heard his unreleased music because I've been in the studio with him. It's really good. You know, I see, I see where he's going, right? So it's like, I hear the music. It has some really cool samples in some of his music. Not all of his music has samples, but I see like what he's doing, right? And I see how people are reacting. And um then he let me hear some unreleased stuff. So I see where he's going musically, right? So I kind of report back to the team, tell Gary, whatever, you know, let, you know, Gary checks it out. He loves it so much. He posts on his social, you know, Gary, everything he does on social is him. He doesn't let anyone else do it. 
So that's cool. And we playlist them. When we playlist them, he might have had 9,000 plays on this one song. Maybe less. I don't know. But I screenshotted it at 9,000. And then today he just posted it broke 100K. And he literally in the caption said thank you to the whole team at 1.37 p.m. And thank you, Mike Boyd uh, Jr. Because, uh, you know, we were playlisting the, the hell out of that song. We still are. I playlist it every week because we love that song. And that's what we do. So it's crazy to see an emerging artist like him in 2021 you know really feeling the effects of our playlist really feeling the effects of gary v and myself and 137 p.m like putting his music to our followers and then getting him involved in these big brand deals that we're working on because he could use the money more than like you know some big star like drake right so like if i give polo t um 10 000, 20 30,000, whatever i give him that's a big deal to anyone but it's more of a big deal to an emerging artist than a superstar you know Absolutely. so it's like it's super win-win and that's what we've always wanted to do and that's what we've always done and tried to do it's just win-win because we get an artist for a good price so they're happy with the money then the brand looks really cool and really smart and they are they are smart but you know what i'm saying it's like they try like, they try like getting meg the stallion on a super bowl commercial exactly the brand that trusts genius. us what'd you say genius oh sorry oh yeah exactly so yeah so you know the brands that are going to work with polo t they trust us it's a risk but they trust us they're like all right cool we see the vision maybe they listen to music and they like it too but the whole point is that these big brands will historically look great you know like if that brand back in 2010 or whenever kendrick lamar dropped section 80 if they would have jumped on board they would look so smart right now you know what i mean it's about taking that risk. And, you know, sometimes brands are scared to take the risk and I get it. But when you're when you're not scared to take the risk, the upside is so huge, especially if you're working with me and Gary V and Vayner Media because we have a track record. You know, we're not mm -hmm. we're not new to this. So, yeah, but seeing Polo T get some money and exposure and build his resume, because when he does sign a record deal, he could say, hey, look, I already made this much money off my music. I already worked with these big brands, huge, like some of the biggest brands in the world are what we're bringing to him right now. And also, you know, I got people like Gary Vee promoting me. I got this playlist promoting my music all the time. It just gives him more leverage because then when he talks to the record label, they treat him differently, you know, which mm -hmm. makes sense. And that's the thing, too. I think I like record labels like some people are so angry, but I'm not angry. It's like you just got to know what you're doing. If you need a team and you need those people on your team to do the deal. But if you don't need the team, maybe wait a little bit. You see what I'm saying? It's like some people are, oh, I hate record labels, or oh, I love it, or whatever. But it's really just a situation of you got to, if you need something, you need to go fix it, you know? Like if you need help with marketing, go get help. And if the record label is the help you need, then take it. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's not really, it might not be the best for everyone, but if you want to be on billboards and you want to be in commercials and you want to be on Netflix, like maybe you do need that. You know, if that's what you want. So you and Gary like have this insane ability to like pick out people and be like, like Mac Miller, like all these names that you are like, yep, this person's going to pop. Like how, like, what do you look for? like? How can you, I'm sure a bunch of people come to you and are like, hey, Mike Boyd, can you play this to me? Like, um, or like, I'm sure you look through so much, so much music that's coming from all these emerging artists and to put on the playlist and you're just trying to decide what makes it and what's not like what do you look for when you're trying to choose an emerging or not choose an emerging artist but like how do you know somewhere like i'm not speaking very tactfully here, no, i get but, it like how yeah. do you know someone's gonna pop yeah like, you're so good at it the way gary's like can see around corners so can you i love it no i agree i uh i know what you're saying so it's a lot of things believe it or not um it's the whole package, you know? So, and you got to keep in mind, like I said earlier, not all the, not the best artist always blows up. And then you got to keep in mind, like, what is your definition of success? You know? So, um, you know, it's like, if I see an artist and they're really musically talented in my subjective opinion, I'll, su I'll support them, you know, him, her, whatever, like whoever the person is, if, if they're musically talented, like they're good at rapping, they're good at singing, maybe the 
beats are really good and they're picking the beats or co-creating the beats or making them themselves like i'll support it because at the end of the day i want to bring people talented musicians you know what i mean so like if you listen to the playlist not everyone's gonna blow up but that's okay because i need you to just hear good music you know like some of everyone has like personal favorite artists that never made it you know like you might be like oh i really like this artist from my neighborhood or from my city or from my state and other people were probably like never heard of them you know what i mean or like whoop de do don't care but it's like to you it means something so like when you listen to the playlist you're getting that but then when i found uh when i first heard tierra whack it was like whoa and i saw her music video from mumbo jumbo which is crazy on youtube and you know you see the whole vision like i said like you see what she does visually with music videos but you also hear her lyrics you hear everything in-house production like all that and she's from philly and you know you just take everything into consideration her style like her clothing um everything her management management is huge if you really want to know if someone's taking it to the next level sometimes having a good team means a whole lot but you know we really believed in tierra whack and so we we're supporting and then I'll tell you something crazy is like we were putting her on the playlist every week, but I was thinking to myself, I was like, dang, I really need to do something so that when she blows up, people remember that they heard her here first. So then I put her like however many songs she had, because this was before her debut project, Whack World. So however many songs she had on Spotify, I think I playlisted them all, all in a row. So like first five or six or whatever it was. And then, and I told D Kirk or, you know, whoever I had to tell who on my team, I was like, yo, we're going to go hard for her and it's going to freak people out or be a jarring experience. When you listen to the playlist and you hit play, you're going to be like, whoa, why was that so many songs from the same artist in a row? That was really weird. Like, and then Gary V had me meet him at this restaurant for a meeting and I was early or he was running late or something. And he was meeting with these old men at a table. And then he called me over. He's like, yo, Mike, come over here. I want you to meet these guys. And I don't remember who they were, but I met him and Gary's like, yo, this is my guy who runs my playlist. And then the old dude was like, yo, love the playlist, but why the hell did you playlist that Tierra Whack artist six times in a row? I hated it. He was like, that was horrible. She's the worst. And I was like, yo, I was like, that's exactly why I did it. I was like, cause I need you to remember that I did that when she blows up. I was like, she's going to be famous, man. And I, I go, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Like, whether you like it or not, I just needed people, you know, because like in, I guess, 2021, like if if you know who Tara Wack is, you're like, wow, she's amazing. But if you were listening to the playlist at the time, you probably, I hope you remember we were early. You know what I mean? And she shouts us out all the time. And she's probably one of the nicest artists I've ever met. But you know what I'm saying? We just try to go hard, like Polo T. I can't believe he shouted us out in his Instagram post. That means a lot to me. Um, that's cool. You know, that's huge for me. You know, he's not the most famous artist at all, but he means a lot to me. So when he shouted me out, I was like, whoa, you know. He cares I, about you. Yeah, I was like, that's crazy, man. Because, you know, we do this. I think we've been doing the playlist for four and a half years. Wow. Like, we've been doing this. And not everyone, no one has to ever say thank you ever i don't care about that but when people do stuff like that it's like whoa that's crazy you know what i mean like that's crazy because like we do this people tell me all the time they're like yo mike we appreciate you promoting the music if you ever want a free show for vayner media whatever we'll do it and i'm like no 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 no. <laughs> that's not why we're doing this yeah they're like yo man uh we want to cut you in on this or that and i'm like no 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 and people try to pay to be on the playlist like, we would never do that because we we can't mess up the integrity of the playlist and we really don't do favors like sometimes i might let something slip once in the last four years or something but it's it's like a really hard moment for me where i'm like yeah you're a great person i guess i'll listen to your song five times in a row and really think about playlisting this but we don't really do favors because you know it's like the record label people i love them they're great but you got to think about it like this they have a day job so like you know, you might um, you might really love Lady Gaga and then you get your day job working at the record label and she's one of the clients of yours. But, you know, you also have six other clients that maybe you don't like. And then maybe you email me 
and you're like, hey, I want my sixth client to be on your playlist. And it's like, I get it. Like, that's your job. And you're really trying to get that happening. But like, we can't fall into the trap of just doing favors. I can't be like, yo, really respect you. So I'm going to blindly playlist everything you send me. You know, some people are like, hey, Mike, can you playlist this uh, pop funk alternative song? And it's like, doesn't really fit the vibe of the playlist this week. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't do that. You know what I mean? So people get it, I guess. But yeah, going back to people trying to do me favors, it's like, please don't do me a favor. Because I tell people all the time, it's like, you're only on the playlist because you're talented. You know what I mean? Like, you don't owe us anything. You really don't. And if you do us a favor, great. I love it. But like, you don't have to. You know? Nothing's expected of you. Yeah, it's like all good, you know. Like, we're playlisting you because you're dope. It's really cool that you acknowledge us and show love back that's amazing but like this is our job you know what i mean this is not a joke like the playlist is for the people it's fun that the artist respects it that's the best it's like that's what i live for i guess but you know what I mean? like you're expecting a free show or expecting them to post it and you're gonna be upset if they don't or yeah exactly sort of thing. but if they want to post it <laughs> oh yeah it's like, working with a, it's like working with a brand i tell artists all the time it's like you get a deal with pepsi and they ask you to post five times, but you end up posting 10 times, Pepsi sees it. And then they're like, oh, damn, now we want that person to do a bigger campaign. And then you go hard and then they're like, OK, now they do a bigger campaign. And then eventually you do their Super Bowl commercial or their halftime show. It's all about just going hard, you know, and Polo T goes hard. That's really cool. And building relationships, which you're so good at. Hell um, Yeah. What else? What else is going on in your world? Do you have any closing thoughts? Oh, um, yeah, you know, the playlist, the podcast, just organic stuff, you know. Uh, Gary V is meeting with Faruko next week. Um, he's really big in the Latin space. I think he's the 25th most streamed artist in the world on Spotify. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. And, I got to make a clarification for everyone. We meet with artists that speak Spanish because my grandpa is from Mexico. My wife is from Paraguay. My in-laws are from Paraguay. Uh, I have to speak Spanish every day in my day life, you know, not for work, but in real life. And I did not know you spoke Spanish. Wow. Yeah, I'm not fluent, but I'm not bad. I'm really not bad because I literally have to speak it. But the point of my story is this. It's not a joke. You know what I mean? Like Gary V, we don't meet with a lot of like K-pop artists and not <laughs> nothing against K-pop. It's the hottest. That's, okay. That shouldn't be funny to me, but it kind oh of my is. God. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I th say things in a funny way, but my point is like, we're not trying to fake it. You know what I mean? Like just because BTS is the hottest thing ever doesn't mean we're necessarily going to meet Hop them. on the bandwagon. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'd love to work with them, but you know, I'm not like out here. We're not out here like, oh, we got to meet Faruko because he's hot. It's like we got to meet Faruko because I personally like him. I personally like the music. My cousin likes the music. You know what I mean? Like tons of people who are related to me are obsessed. So I'm like, hey, Gary, this guy's great. You know what I mean? So it's coming from an authentic place. It's not like because, you know, some people get it confused and some people don't know Gary V personally. A lot of people don't know me personally. So it's like. I just got to make that clarification, you know, and lately on the podcast, I've interviewed some people from Mexico or Spain, and I've thrown in some Spanish because I want them to know exactly what I want them to hear. You know what I mean? Like, that's why you speak Spanish. You speak it so people could understand you. It's not a joke. You know what I mean? So, like, we're just trying to be real. You know what I mean? Like, Gary really loves rap. Gary really loves the Latin space. You know what I mean? I really love the Latin space. I really love rap. I also like pop. I also like rock. I also like alternative. I played the piano in college. Um, I played the guitar in high school. I used to be so good. If you played the guitar, I could, or the piano, I could tell you what note you were hitting just from listening to it. Wow. You know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. it's not a joke. I just need to say that. You know what I mean? Because some people are jokes, but we're not jokes. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Some people are jokes. Some people are big time liars, <laughs> fakes and phonies, but we're not. So that's a Mac Boyd quote right there. That's the quote. Crop that. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, we're just trying to do real stuff. Obviously, no one's perfect, but we're just trying to do real organic things, you know? Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it, unless you have anything else, Boyd. 
No, I think that's it. Um, yeah, we've already ran double the time that we intended to. Yeah, it's okay. I was having fun. Yeah, me too. Um, this was great.